Shalom family, we are over the course of this weekend in the midst of celebrating one of the most high set apart appointments, the feast day of Shavuot, who some may know as uh, Pentecost. And this is the last of the spring feast days that we began with Passover. Um, and since this Hebrew New Year began, which was around towards the end of March, which was two weeks before Passover, the Most High has been speaking and moving in the earth, and He's been sending a distinct message to His people that is in conjunction to the feast days. So right around the time leading up to Passover is the time that this whole COVID-19 shutdown began. Okay, so, and I talk about that in another video that you can check out. I'm not going to go into that here. But we started that during this season of Passover. And now as we're leading up to, in, in the midst of Shavuot, over this time period in between, the message has been very distinct, what he has been saying to his people. And if you are familiar with the feast days and what they mean, then these messages should be shouting out to you as to how the happenings in the world are linked in to the message of these set apart times. So as we're going into Shavuot here, um, Shavuot is a time, see, when Moses and the children of Israel were given the Torah, were given um, the Most High's instructions, uh, that time period was in conjunction with Shavuot. Okay, so the Most High gave his instructions, his wisdom, his ways of living, his Torah. He gave that to his people that he was making a covenant with, the children of Israel. And in Exodus chapter 19, 4, as the Most High is giving this, getting preparing the people for to receive this, this word and to come into this covenant. In chapter 19, verse 4, it says, you have seen what I did to the Mitzrites, the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. He's talking about how he brought them out of Egypt. And he says, and now if you diligently obey my voice and shall guard my covenant, then you shall be my treasured possession above all the peoples. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a set-apart nation. Those are the words which you are to speak to the children of Israel. So he's given this to Moshe, to Moses, to speak to the children of Israel. And then after this, Moses begins to set the people apart. He says that Moses came and called for the elders of the people and set before them all these words which Yahuwah commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that Yahuwah has spoken, we shall do. So Moses, Moshe, brought back the words of the people to Yahuwah. So they say to him, this all that you say we shall do. So the Most High begins to set them apart. And then in chapter 20, he begins to give his commands. This is where you find the Ten Commandments. He begins to give his commands and goes on in the following chapters, 21, 22, uh, 23, to give his instructions, okay, to give his way of living to his people that he's making a covenant with. So we get over to Exodus chapter 24. And... In verse 3 it says that Moshe came and related to the people all the words of Yahuwah and all the right rulings. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which Yahuwah has spoken, we shall do. So, so it's, it's as an I do. It's just like going to the altar. <laughs> you know, they get, they say, you know, till death, you know, they give the, you know, do you, do you, Agree, you know, till death do you part, and this and that, sickness and in health, and all those type of things that they say, and then the person says, "I do." So this is this is similar to that. It's saying all the words which Yahuwah has spoken, we shall do. We're going to obey this covenant. So Moshe wrote down all the words of Yahuwah and rose up early in the morning and built a, a altar at the foot of the mountain and twelve standing columns for the twelve tribes of Israel. And then he goes down to give these instructions. As to how he's uh, enacting this covenant. In verse 6 says, And Moshe took half the blood and put it in basins, and half the blood he sprinkled on a slaughter place. Um, this is from the blood of the bulls and 
uh, and it says verse 7 and he took the covenant the book of the covenant and read in the hearing of the people and they said all that Yahuwah has spoken we shall do and obey and Moshe took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said see the blood of the covenant which Yahuwah has made with you concerning all these words so this blood covenant is made with the Most High sealing them into this covenant with the Most High of them saying that all that all that you have told us the Most High all that you your word that you've given to us we uh, we agree to obey it and do it and we enter into this covenant with you okay so this is this is an exodus this is the the people of, of Israel and this is um, in conjunction with Shavuot when the Most High gave his word and made his covenant with his people okay so there's some conditions to this uh, to this covenant so I'm going to flip over to let's see I'm going to flip over first to Leviticus chapter 26 so the Most High tells the children of Israel um, I'll start at verse 1 do not make idols for yourself I'm going to start at um, chapter 25, verse 55. Because the children of Israel are servants to me, they are my servants whom I brought out of the land of Mizraim, out of Egypt. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Do not make idols for yourself, and do not set up carved image or a pillar for yourselves. Do not place a stone image in your land to bow down to it, for I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Guard my Sabbaths and reverence my set-apart place. I am Yahuwah. If you walk in my laws and guard my commands and shall do them, then I shall give you rain in its season, and the land shall yield its crops, and the trees of the field yield their fruit. And your threshing shall last to the time of the grape harvest, and the grape harvest shall last to the time of sowing. You shall eat your bread until you have enough, and shall dwell in your land safely. So the Most High put them in a land that, he will, that, that the children of Israel will be protected under his rulership. That they would be protected, the land would give them everything that they need. That they would be prosperous in this land, in the land of Israel. When they, he moved them into Canaan and, and, and it became the nation of Israel um, under the Most High as, as their king, as their ruler. And so he brought them to this land. He's, he was telling them that if you obey, then you'll be prosperous in this land. You'll live in this land that I've set apart for you and you will prosper. So this is what he's breaking down to them. And it says... And I shall give you peace in the land, verse 6, and you shall lie down and no one make you afraid. And I shall clear the land of evil beasts and not let the sword go through your land. And you shall pursue your enemies and they shall fall by the sword before you. And five of you shall pursue a hundred and a hundred of you pursue ten thousand and your enemies shall fall by the sword before you. And I shall turn to you and make you fruitful and shall increase you and shall establish my covenant with you. And you shall eat the old supply and clear out the old because of the new. You'll have more than enough. And I shall set my dwelling place in your midst, and my being shall not reject you. And I shall walk in your midst, and you it shall be your Elohim, and you shall be my people. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Egypt from being their slaves. And I have broken the bars of your yoke and made you walk upright. Okay, so he's telling you, this is, you'll be blessed if you obey my commands in in in, in uh, continue in this covenant but verse 14 says but if you do not obey me and do not do all these commands and if you reject my laws or if your being loathes my right rulings so that you do not do all my commands but break my covenant I also do this to you and I shall appoint sudden alarm over you wasting disease and inflammation destroying the eyes and consuming the life and you shall sow your seed in vain for your enemies shall eat it and I shall set my face against you, and you shall be smitten before your enemies. And those who hate you shall rule over you, and you shall flee when no one pursues you. And after all this, if you do not obey me, then I shall punish you seven times more for your sins. And I shall break the pride of your power. And I shall break the pride of your power. And you shall make, it shall make your heavens like iron, and your earth like bronze. And your strength shall be spent in vain. And your land not yield its crops, nor the trees of the land yield their fruit. 
And if you walk contrary to me and refuse to obey me, I shall bring on you seven times more plagues according to your sins, and send wild beasts among you, which shall bereave you of your children. And I shall cut off your livestock and make you few in number, and your highways shall be deserted. And if you are not instructed by me my, by these, but walk contrary to me, then I shall also walk contrary to you. And I myself shall strike you seven times for your sins. And I shall bring against you a sword, executing the vengeance of my covenant. And you shall gather together in your cities, and I shall send pestilence among you. And you shall be given into the hand of the enemy. When I have cut off your supply of bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall bring back to you your bread by weight, and you shall eat and not be satisfied. And if in spite of this you do not obey me, but walk contrary to me, then I shall walk contrary to you in wrath, and I myself shall punish you seven times for your sins, and I myself shall punish you seven times for your sins, and you shall eat the flesh of your sons and eat the flesh of your daughters. And I shall destroy your high places and cut down your sun pillars and put your carcasses on the carcasses of your idols. And my being shall loathe you. And I shall turn your cities into ruins and lay your set apart places waste and not smell your sweet fragrances. And I shall lay the land waste and your enemies who dwell in it shall be astonished at it. And I shall scatter you among the nations and draw out a sword after you and your land shall be, desert, shall be deserted and your cities ruined. And the land enjoy its Sabbath as long as it lies waste and you are in your enemy's land. Then the land would rest and enjoy its Sabbath. So the Most High is telling us what's going to happen. And he says, And for those who are left, I shall send faintness into their hearts in the land of their enemies. I shall send faintness. So he's saying that your land, you in this protected space, this land that I put you in to be protected, is going to be destroyed. You're going to be cast off from this land. You're going to be scattered into the land of your enemies uh, and, and be in a state of ruin. And he says that when you're in this place, I'm going to send faintness into your hearts in the land, in the land of your enemies. And the sound of a shaken leaf shall cause them to flee. And they shall flee as though retreating from a sword. And they shall fall when no one pursues. And they shall stumble over one another as from before a sword, when no one pursues. And you shall be unable to stand before your enemies. So we're saying, you will not be able to stand before your enemies. When I send you into your enemy land, you won't be able to stand. You shall perish among the nations, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And those of you who are left right away in their crookedness, in your enemies' land, and also in their father's crookedness, right away with them. So he's telling you, you're going to perish in the land of your enemies. What is the land of your enemies? All the lands to which I have scattered the children of Israel, to which they have gone into captivity and exile in these lands of their enemies. These lands where the people have ruled over them. This land that I'm in called America, which is where my ancestors were brought over here uh, against their will and held, have been held captive to, do, uh, to, to be held, treated inhumanely. Over the last four or five hundred years, okay, so the Most High has prophesied this, has said this was going to happen, okay. So, but He says in verse forty, but if they confess their crookedness and the crookedness of their fathers with their trespass, in which they have trespassed against Me, and that they also have walked contrary to Me, and that I also have walked contrary to them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if their uncircumcised heart is then humbled. And they accept the punishment of their crookedness. If your heart is humbled and you accept the punishment of your crookedness, then I shall remember my covenant with Jacob, Jacob, and also my covenant with Yitzhak, which is Isaac, and also remember my covenant with Abraham, and remember the land, because this covenant was originally made with Abraham. So the most I said, I will remember this covenant that I made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I remember the land that I promised. And he says, For the land was abandoned by them and enjoying the Sabbaths while lying waste without them. And they were paying for their crookedness because they rejected my right rulings and because they're being, uh, they're being loathed my laws. And yet for all this, where they are in the land of their enemies, I shall not reject them, nor shall I loathe them so as to destroy them and break my covenant with them. For I am Yah your Elohim. Then I shall remember for their sake the covenant of the ancestors whom I brought out of the land of Mitraim, Egypt, before the eyes of the nations to be their Elohim. I am Yahuwah. He said, I'll remember this covenant. 
These are the laws and the right rulings in the, in the Torah which Yahuwah made between himself and the children of Israel on Mount Sinai by the hand of Moshe, Moses. So, this is a clear picture. The Most High lays out, this is again Leviticus 26, he lays out, you know, what's going to happen and how he's going to protect his people in, in their land under him, under his rulership and authority, under his power as our mighty one, if we were to obey the covenant. Then he lays out very clearly how we will be slowly destroyed and uh, he will break the pride of our power and make the heavens like iron and bronze that that because he is our power. <laughs> he is our power, but 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 we when we assert our own power against him, then we put ourselves on the opposite side of our power. And this is what we have done. We put ourselves on the opposite side of our power. We put a separation between us and our power, which has rendered us powerless. So when he tells us how we're going to be cast off from the land that he put us in to be protected, we're going to be scattered amongst the nations, amongst our enemies, and we're going to be destroyed in the land against our enemies. But the Most High said, but he will not forsake the covenant that he made with Abraham. He will not completely and utterly destroy us, but he will draw us, he will bring us back once we confess our crookedness, accept this punishment that he's uh, placed upon us, and humble ourselves and, and, re and return to him. Then he said he'll remember this covenant, and then he'll he'll begin he'll begin to to uh, confirm this covenant and to bring us back. Okay, so so I read that to, to to give a picture of because if you don't understand who we are, that that those of us who are in these countries as as descendants of those who are taken captive in these in and scattered to these uh, various lands, part of the diaspora. Okay, if we don't understand who we are, that we are descendants of, of this people, that we will never be able to correctly interpret what is happening to us in this world. And if we can't correctly interpret what's happened to what, happening to us in this world, then we will never have the correct response. If we don't know the, the cause, you can't find the solution. So we are coming up with, with solutions, and we have been for decades and decades and decades uh, trying to enact solutions that are inadequate that will never work, that are insufficient, okay? So, again, we are in the season of Shavuot, all right? We are in this season right now in 2020 of Shavuot, okay? When the Most High gave this instruction, his instructions, and the, and the people made an agreement that they would uh, come into alignment with, this, with these instructions. And you can read Deuteronomy chapter 28 for another uh, telling of this, a more a detailed, more detailed, telling of the same thing that I read in Leviticus 26, okay? When the Most High laid before them blessings and curses, it told them to choose life, but to not choose, you know, to not, if they don't choose life, and they'll end up in death under these curses, okay? So, this covenant was made with the children of Israel during the time of Shavuot, and then it was broken <laughs> over the years. It was continually broken um, by the children of Israel to the point where, the, where it was finally severed, uh, and they were sent away. And what was preserved during this time of this covenant being broken was the covenant with Judah. Israel was broken into two into two houses, with which the northern kingdom was the house of Israel and the southern kingdom the house of Judah. And Judah was preserved because the Most High made a covenant with David, the King David, who was a representation, who his kingdom uh, was was righteous and represented uh, a righteous priesthood and a righteous kingdom. Okay, so and the Most High promised David because he had his spirit, he had his heart. That he would, he would continue to rule through the tribe of Judah. Okay, so that there's a Messiah that is promised to come to restore this covenant. The Messiah, who this world has has called Jesus, but that we know as Yahusha or Yeshua, our Messiah. Okay, uh, who who the world calls the Christ. Okay, so he was promised to come through the tribe of Judah. And the main, his main purpose was to restore this covenant. One of his main purposes was to restore this covenant that was made. Okay, so in a later season, so thousands of years after this time of Moses and, and Shavuot, the Israelite uh, from the tribe of Judah, Yahusha, during the same season of the spring feast, was executed from, by being hung on a tree during the season of Passover. Okay. And again, Most High moves in alignment with his feast days. Okay, so during the time of Passover, Yahusha uh, was offered up, up unto the Most High as a, uh, he was 
hung on a tree, executed, and then during the time of first fruits, we was offered up to the Most High as a first fruits of those of us who will inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Okay, and on his ascent, because he was he was uh, murdered, but he could not be held in his grave because it was unjust. He was uh, he was without sin, and the death the grave could not hold him. So through the power of the Spirit of the Most High Yah. He, uh, Yahushua was resurrected and he spent 40 days he spent time, you can read that in Acts chapter 1 he spent time uh, uh, amongst the people for 40 days and he told them that the Most High was going to be sending the promised spirit so this time period that he was on the earth um, after the resurrection he was it was leading up to Shavuot again so this season of Shavuot and he's telling them that the Most High is going to give the promised spirit the Ruach, the spirit was going to be poured out. And he told them to tarry. He told them to wait. Do not go back. Do not leave Jerusalem. But wait here for this spirit to be poured out. You uh, To be poured out. And you can read that in the beginning of, of Acts. The book of Acts. Uh, chapter 1, chapter 2. Okay, so so we go back to the, where the first Shavuot, the children of Israel kept it together in the wilderness and was given the covenant and confirmed uh, with the Most High. And uh, thousands of years later, we have one of the last Shavuot that will be kept in the land by uh, by Judah, where the Spirit was poured out. So the Spirit is poured out as a confirmation. So so the Most High, in this first Shavuot, the Most High was confirming the covenant with the children of Israel, as we read. And in this, one of the last uh, Shavuot that was kept in the land with them together as a people, the Spirit was poured out to confirm the renewing of that same covenant through Yahushua the Messiah. Okay? So this covenant is being confirmed by the Spirit being poured out. Okay? So this is part of the good news. This is part of uh, the, the good news being that, that the children of Israel can return to this covenant that was being restored to them in an even greater way than before. So this point, this outpouring of the Ruach and, and through his the covenant and his blood, this, this, this covenant is being restored in an even greater way uh, that goes even beyond the children of Israel. So, so this is all the season of Shavuot. So, as I said before, right now, in 2020, we are in the season of 20 of uh, Shavuot. Okay, and 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 to go back when when the Most High uh, poured out His ruach during the time of Yahusha, when He poured out His ruach on His people, and He renewed this covenant. The ruach is to, to, to the spirit is to write these things on our heart, right? Is to write his word that he initially gave on our heart and to empower us to keep it and walk in it. Okay, so in 2020, right now, we find ourselves in the midst of the season of Shavuot. Most High's instructions were given. His spirit was given to write that on our heart, and in our inner being to empower us to walk in it. But as we're in this season, in this year, in the world, there's an outcry right now because yet another black man has been unjustly murdered by a white police officer and was not immediately arrested as a murderer, you know, as is so often done. So now there's rioting, there's protesting, there's an outcry against the system of injustice, you know, that has perpetrated the same cycle against people of color in America and across the world for hundreds of years. Um... And there's an outcry right now of violence that's meant to get the attention of these world powers to respond to injustice. Now, honestly, this a part of this outcry is a result of also just the state that we've been in over the last months and people being locked in and, and all of the anguish of people going through this shutdown and this lockdown and all that has come out of this COVID-19 situation. Okay, that I honestly believe that more of this is coming from that. Okay, but part of this outcry is, is coming from this injustice, all right? So, there's an outcry, what, to the powers, to get the world powers' attention, okay, to respond. And then there's an outcry to the Most High, you know, for him to see and to respond to this injustice against his people. And the state that his people are in, the oppression, you know, so, but many don't understand the cause. And we've been laying out in this video what, what is the cause. So if you don't know the cause, like I said, you won't know the solution. 
But the Most High has made both of these things clear to us in His Word. So when you understand that the same people who are being oppressed and murdered in 2020 are descendants of the people who made a covenant saying that the Most High, uh, that they would obey the Most High and broke that covenant, you know, realize that you, we're now finding ourselves facing the repercussions of that that we've read in, in Leviticus 26 that you can read in, in Deuteronomy 28. This puts this in proper perspective. So now you can come to understand what is the solution to this situation? Is it rioting? Is it protesting? Are these things going to ever bear fruit? So in, um, in Zechariah chapter uh, 4, verse 6, in the midst there, there was a statement made that says, when the Most High is saying that, uh, talking about a victory being won, and he says that it's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by my spirit. And this is what the Most High says, by, uh, says Yahuwah. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. How do we overcome? Not by power, because we don't have power in this world. <laughs> we don't have power. What power? Okay? As much as people want to think that they have power here, we don't have power in this world. Uh, you can't be the tail and, and have power over the head. So not by power, not by might, because our might is insufficient. By design... Our might is insufficient. It says, but by, but by the Spirit of Yah is how we are able to overcome. By the Spirit of Yah. Now, again, I said we were in the season where the, the Word was given and then the Spirit was given to empower us to walk in His Word. So, the Most High said, not by power, not by might, but by my Spirit is how you overcome. And I'm going to say two things about, about this when it deals with His Spirit and how we overcome by His Spirit. So, first of all, if you don't have the spirit of Yah leading you to give you wisdom, to give you guidance, to give you understanding, to give you truth, to give you direction, to lead your footsteps, then you will not know how to navigate in this world. That's why he poured out uh, his, his spirit on us individually. So he, he poured out his spirit on us so that we would have this portion with us. So that it, we can have this inner wisdom, this guidance, this understanding that we can hear his voice and, and be led by him. Uh, especially because he knew that we would be scattered in the world. He knew that we were going to break the covenant. We were going to be scattered in the world and that we would need this seal. We would need this covenant. We would need his voice with us wherever we are, wherever we go, because he knew that his overall covering would no longer protect us as a collective people. He knew that his overall covering was not going to be with us uh, in that protective space in our land, in our uh, uh, place where he was king, you know, so so he gave us this. He gave us his ruach. He's poured out his ruach on us because he knew what we were going to need. Let me let me show you. Let me explain to you what Moses understood. Let me go to um, Exodus chapter thirty three. Look at what Moses understood. So before he before he sent Moses to you know he told him he wanted Moses to go to Pharaoh and to you know tell him to let his people go and all that and leaving Egypt right. So he says. In verse, I'll start at verse 12. And, Mos, and Moses or Moshe said to Yahuwah, See, you are saying to me, bring up this people, but you have not made known to me whom you would send with me, though you have said, I know you by name, and have also found favor in my eyes. And now please, if I have found favor in your eyes, please show me your way and let me know you so that I find favor in your eyes and consider that this nation is your people. And he said, My presence does go, and I shall give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence is not going, do not lead us up from here. For how then shall it be known that I have found favor in your eyes, I and your people, except you go with us? Then we shall be distinguished, I and your people, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. What did Moses understand here? He said that I need somebody to go with me. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm going to go bring these people out, if I'm going to go come against power, if I'm going to come against power, this power that is holding our people in the bondage, then how am I going to do this? Who's going to go with me? And the most I says that my presence is going to go with you. Okay? And then Moses is smart enough to know that if your presence is not going, then please don't lead us. Because how will they know that we have your favor? If your presence doesn't go with us, 
How will we be distinguished from any other people on the face of this earth if your presence is not with us? So the Most High and Moses both confirm here that it's by the presence of the Most High that by his spirit, by his presence, by his presence, because his in, in his spirit and his presence is his authority. The Most High, nothing happens without the authority of the Most High. No, no one can come against this. This uh, I'm gonna go over to Proverbs chapter 21, verse 30. Verse 30. It says, "For there is no wisdom, or understanding, or counsel against Yahuwah." There's no wisdom or understanding. No, no, nobody can take counsel against the Most High. The Most High is the ultimate authority. Nobody can scheme and come against something to come against the Most High. The Most High, anything that the Most High allows will be. And whatever He resists will not be. It says, the horse is prepared for the day of battle, but the deliverance is of Yahuwah. You can prepare for the day of battle, but deliverance comes from the Most High Yah. So it, it is in the Most High's, uh, it, is, it is His decision who will win, who will overcome, who will be victorious. So if the Most High sends His presence with you, then you will win. <laughs> if He's with you, then you will overcome. And if the presence of Yah is not with you, then you will, are as good as is defeated. Okay, so this is understood by our people. Okay, again, in the book of, uh, the book of Joshua... Uh, chapter 7 we see in chapter 6 we see that that uh, Joshua we see that the people they're sent out to battle right and they are unsuccessful so Joshua in chapter uh, 7 is, is, is crying out to the Most High and the Most High answers him because he's saying like you know I, we, why is it that you brought us here to it's in verse 7 it says, and uh, Yahushua said, Oh, Master Yahuwah, why have you brought this people over the, the Jordan at all to give us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? So he's saying, what, what's going on here? What's, what's happening? Why is it that we, <laughs> we're, not, we're being destroyed in this battle? And verse 10 it says, And Yahuwah said to Yahushua, Joshua, rise up. And he says in verse 11, Yisrael has sinned. And they have also transgressed my covenant, which I have commanded them. They have even taken some of that which is under the ban, and have, been, and have both stolen and deceived, and also put it among their goods. So the most I gave them instructions to destroy everything, to not take these things. But the people, uh, it, uh, Achan, and uh, it was taken, the, the, the things were taken that the most I said to not take. So, um, so it says in verse 12, And the sons of Israel shall not be able to stand before their enemies. The sons of Israel shall not be able to stand before the enemies. They are going to turn their backs before their enemies, for they have become accursed. I am not with you anymore, unless you destroy that which is under the ban from your midst. Rise up, set the people apart, and you shall say, Set yourselves apart for tomorrow, because thus said Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, That which is under the ban is in your midst. O Yisrael, you are not able to stand before your enemies until you put away that which is under the ban out of your midst. So this is again is another uh, confirmation that the Most High is saying that you have put yourself under a curse. You have put yourself under a curse. You have broken my covenant. You have not obeyed my word. So now you will not you will not be able to stand before your enemies. You will be destroyed before your enemies. Okay. So the Most High is confirming this over and over again. If you read the Apocrypha, Apocrypha is, is, is books that were taken out of the scriptures. They're extra they're, uh, books that were uh, mostly during the time period in between what we call the Old Testament, what we call the New Testament. But in between that time period, um, um, it's part time doing the, the uh, captivities and stuff. So this is the book of Judith that is in the Apocrypha, okay? The book of Judith. And in chapter 5 of the book of Judith, we see this same, we see this th same thing echoed okay it says what do I want to read and they, they the people know the same thing they this 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 is something that's being 
that's known by our people and by the nations. The nations begin to realize um, the same thing. So it says, they cast, I'm going to read verse 17. And it says, while they sinned not before their God, they prospered. Because the Elohim, because the Elohim that hateth iniquity was with them. So it says, so it's, I'm going to, let me see, no, I want to go back. I'm going to start back at verse 9. So it's given an account. They're given, what they're given here is an account of different situations where the Most High, where they recognize that the Most High delivered them. So they go back to Egypt, goes to Mesopotamia. So it goes to these different times. Verse 11 says, Therefore the king of Egypt rose up against them and dealt subtly with them and brought them low with laboring and brick and made them slaves. Then they cried out unto their God, their Elohim, and he smote all the land of Egypt with incurable plague. So the Egyptians cast them out of their sight. And Yahuwah dried the Red Sea before them and brought them to Mount Sinai and cast forth all that dwelt in the wilderness. So they dwelt in the land of the Amorites and they destroyed by their strength all of, the, um, all of them passing over Jordan. They possessed all the hill country and they cast forth... Uh, and they cast forth before them Canaanite, Perizzite, Jebusite, Sechemite, and the Jergesites. And they dwelt in that country many days. And whilst they sinned, okay, pay attention to verse 17. And whilst they sinned not before their Elohim, they prospered. Because the Elohim that hateth iniquity was with them. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles very sore. And were led captives into a land that was not theirs. And the temple of their Elohim was cast to the ground, and their cities were taken by the enemies. But now are they but now are they returned to their Elohim and are come up from the places where they were scattered and have possessed Jerusalem, where their sanctuary is, and are seated in the hill country, for it was desolate. Now therefore, my land and governor, if there be any error in this people, and they sin against their Elohim, let us consider that this shall be their ruin, and let us go up. And we shall overcome them. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by, lest their Lord defend them, and their Elohim be for them, and we become a reproach before all the world. So this, these are the enemies of the of uh, the people of of the children of Israel, and they're plotting and they're figuring out. They're saying like, listen, they're smart enough to look upon the people, the children of Israel, to say, okay, wait a minute. Okay, all these situations where the Most High defended his people, and we notice that when they're in right alignment, when they're obeying their power, their Most High, their Elohim, the Most High defends them, and nobody can stand against them. But we, but we see that if they are in error, though, if they're in, uh, uh, in sin, then the Most High, that we can come and take them down, because their Elohim, their power is not with them. When they are against the power, when they are they are uh, uh, out of alignment with the Most High Yah, so so even the enemies recognize this and understand this. Okay, so those are several witnesses that we see of this truth. So, so where are we today? What is our problem today? Our problem today is is that mo a lot of our people are stiff-necked still, as is laid out in the scriptures, and refuse to turn their he ears to hear the law of the Most High. They're those who are who are in man, many religions, okay. Even those who 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 fought, who the Bible is the main book, <laughs> you know. And but refuse to hear the truth, the truth that the Most High Yah's people, that we are descendants of His people. Those of us who are descendants of these people who have been held ca held captive throughout the world. Those of us who are here in America, who our ancestors were brought here captive, that we are uh, that this covenant. So in, in let me read this. Let me read this in um in Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight says, and all these curses curses shall come. Verse forty five says, and all these curse, curses shall come upon you, and they shall pursue and overtake you until you are destroyed, because you did not obey the voice of Yahweh your Elohim to guard his commands. And his laws, which he commanded you, and it says, and, and they shall. This is after he lists all the different curses and how to how to recognize. And he says, and they shall be upon you for a sign and for a wonder, and on your seed forever. 
because you did not serve Yahuwah your Elohim with joy and gladness of heart for all the plenty, you shall serve your enemies whom Yahuwah sends against you in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, and in need of all. And he shall put a yoke of iron on your neck until he has destroyed you. And Yahuwah shall bring a nation against you from afar, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies, a nation whose language you shall not understand, a fierce-looking nation who shall show no regard for the elderly, nor show favor to the young. Okay, what did it say? It says, they shall be a sign, these curses will be a sign and a wonder. They'll be for a sign and for a wonder. What does a sign do? What is a sign? A wonder is something that you that you look in awe on, like like whoa, <laughs> wow. You know, this is amazing that this is continually happening. And what does a sign do? A sign points the way. It gives direction. A sign, you know, you see something that says uh uh stop, don't go. When you see somebody waving you down, what is that? That's that's getting your attention to tell you to give you direction, okay? So the Most High has to keep allowing. He said that these curses are going to be on you as a sign and a wonder on your seed forever. Uh, for how long? Until you, until this people recognize, as we read earlier, their sins. Is that until they recognize the sins of their ancestors. Until they return to the covenant of the Most High. So we will keep seeing these signs and wonders until our, our people come out of their blindness, come out of their stiff neckness, and turn their head. To hear the law, the word, the Torah, the instructions of the Most High and repent and turn back to the ways of the Most High. But if we refuse to see that this is what's going on with our people, if we, if we want to turn to other ideologies as to why black people are going through these things, if we, if we refuse to hear what the Most High has laid out before us, if we refuse to return to his ways, then we will continue to see this sign and this wonder. So why is this happening in 2020? Will rioting fix it? Will inject? Will uh, protesting fix it? Or will returning to the ways of the Most High fix it? I want to read uh, read this. What's this very popular thing that we hear and we say all the time, but for some reason we don't we don't uh, attest that this applies to us in Second Chronicles chapter seven. And this is, uh, I'm going to start at verse 12. It says, And Yahuwah appeared to Shalomo, which is Solomon, King Solomon, after he finished uh, the house of Yah. He says, He says to him, I've heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of offering. If I shut up the heavens and there's no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, and my people whom, and my people whom, upon whom my name is called, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their evil ways, then shall I hear from the heavens, and forgive their sin, and heal their land. Okay, he says, if if I shut up the, he the heavens, if I'm responding to the wickedness of, of Israel, basically, and my people Israel, who I put my name on, if they humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their ways, then I'll hear from heaven, and forgive their sins, and then I'll heal their land. So this is Tim talking about our land over in, in Israel, right? So he says, you know, my eyes are open and I'm attentive to the prayer of this place. Well, now my eyes are open and my ears are attentive to the prayer of this place right now. And now I've chosen to set this house apart from my name to be there forever. And my eyes and my heart shall always be there. And if, and you, if you walk before me as your father walked and do according to all that I've commanded you, and if you guard my laws and my right rulings, then I shall establish the throne of your kingdom that I covenant with David. Your father saying there is not to cease a man of yours as ruler in Israel. But, okay, so this is this is King Solomon. This is before the, the house of Israel was split into Israel and Judah, the northern and southern kingdoms. Okay, so he's saying that while you're in this land, this is what's going to happen. But he says, but if you turn away and forsake my laws and my commands, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other mighty ones and bow yourself to them, then I shall pluck them from my land, which I have given them. And this house, which I have set apart for my name, I shall cast out of my sight. And make it to be a proverb and a mockery amongst all the people. Even this house, which has been exalted, everyone who passes by it shall be astonished and say, Why has Yah done this to this land and this house? And they shall say, Because they forsook Yah, Elohim of their fathers, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, and embraced other mighty ones, and bowed themselves to them, and served them before he has brought. Therefore he has brought all this evil on them. So the Most High says, If my people... Who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Then I then I will restore their land. 
But if they turn and forsake my laws, then they're going to be cast out from this place. Okay, and it's going to be a mockery. So we're in the place. So we're in the aftermath of all this right now. So what are we to do? What are we to do? We're going to turn to the book of Baruch. The book of Baruch is also in the Apocrypha. Okay, it's the reason why these books were taken out. Because of the people who they are for. And the truth that is 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 in here that are Jews for those of us. I'm going to read chapter 2. Therefore, Yahuwah uh, Yahu hath made good his word which he pronounced against us and against our judges that judged Israel and against our kings, against our princes, against the men of Israel and, and Judah to bring upon us great plagues such as never happened under the whole heaven as it came to pass in Jerusalem according to the things that were written in the law of Moses. Then a man shall eat the flesh of his son and the flesh of his own daughter. Moreover, he hath delivered them to be in subjection to all the kingdoms that are round about us, to be as a reproach and a desolation among all the people round about where Yahuwah has scattered them. Thus we were cast down and not exalted, because we have sinned against Yahuwah our Elohim, and have not been obedient unto his voice. To Yahuwah our Elohim appertain the righteousness, but to us and to our fathers open shame as appeareth this day. For all these plagues are come upon us, which Yahuwah hath pronounced against us. Yet have we not prayed before Yahuwah that we might turn every one from the imagination? It says, Yet we have not prayed before Yahuwah that we might turn every one from the imaginations of his wicked heart. Wherefore Yahuwah watched over us for evil, and Yahuwah hath brought it upon us. For Yahuwah is righteous in all his works, which he hath commanded us. Yet we have not hearkened unto his voice to walk in the commandments of Yahuwah that he hath set before us. And now, O Yahuwah, Elohim of Israel, that has brought thy people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and high arm, with signs, with wonders, with great power, and has gotten thyself a name as appeareth this day. O Yahuwah, our Elohim, we have sinned, we have done ungodly, we have dealt unrighteously in all thine ordinances. Let thy wrath turn from us, for we are but a few left among the heathen, where thou hast scattered us. Hear our prayers, O Yahuwah, and our petition, and deliver us for thine own sake, and give us favor in the sight of them which have led us away. So this is, this is laying out turning, acknowledging, and repenting. Okay? And then he's asking for favor. Give us favor in the sight of them which have led us away, which the Most High has begun, will begin, will begin. Uh, to continue to do, because this is what you this is what you have to be seeking in this time. We have to be, as that spirit is poured out on us, is leading us and guiding us. We have to seek and ask the Most High. Continue to repent. Continue to turn our ear back and continue to uh, to ask for favor in the midst of these circumstances. The chosen ones will find favor. Okay. Verse 15, verse fifteen that all the earth may know that thou art Yahuwah our Elohim, because Yisrael. And his posterity is called by thy name. The Most High is doing this for his name's sake. Okay. This this is written in history. This is written prophetically. Okay. So the Most High is, is going to come for his people. Okay. But his people have to be in, in alignment and, and do their part for him to be able to do his part. Okay. So the people who, have to, who are called by his name, we have to humble ourselves and pray. Acknowledge our sin. And return back to the ways of the Most High. And then seek the Most High for his favor in, this, in the midst of this. Because the Most High is going to do that for his name's sake. Because he said he will not forever forsake this house. He says, O Yahuwah, look down from the holy house and consider us. Bow down thine ear, O Yahuwah, to hear us. Open thine eyes and behold. For the dead that are in the graves whose souls are taken from their bodies will give unto the Yahuwah neither, pra neither praise nor righteousness. But the soul that is greatly vexed, which goeth, goeth stooping and feeble... And the eyes that fail and the hungry soul will give thee praise and righteousness, O Yahuwah. Therefore we do not make our humble supplication before thee, O Yahuwah Elohim, for the righteousness of our fathers and of our kings. For thou hast sent out thy wrath and indignation upon us, and thou hast spoken by thy servants, the prophets, saying, Thus saith Yahuwah, bow down your shoulders to serve the king of Babylon, so shall ye remain in the land that I gave unto your fathers. But if ye will not hear the voice of, the, of Yahuwah to serve the king of Babylon, I will cause to cease out of the cities of, of Judah and from among and from without Jerusalem the voice of mirth and the voice of joy and the voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the bride, and the whole land shall be desolate of inhabitants. 
So again, this is written during the time of, of the Babylonian captivity. So verse 24, but we would not hearken unto thy voice to serve the king of Babylon. So they, they wouldn't do what they were supposed to do. Therefore hast thou made good the words that thou spakest by thy servants, the prophets. Namely, that our bones of our kings and the bones of our fathers shall be taken out of their places. So even within the captivity, they would not obey. And though they are cast out of the heat of the day and to the frost of the night, and they died in great miseries by famine, by sword, by pestilence. And the house which is called by thy name hast thou laid waste, as it has been seen this day for the wickedness of the house of Israel and the house of Judah. O Yahuwah, our Elohim, thou hast, thou hast dealt with us after all thy goodness and according to all thy great mercy. As thou spake to thy servant Moses in the day when thou hast commanded him to write the law before the children of Israel, saying, If you will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned and to a small number among the nations where I shall scatter them. For I knew that they would not hear me, because it's a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. What do we do now? We have to begin to remember ourselves. What else? It shall know that I am Yahuwah their Elohim, for I will give them a heart and ears to hear. So the Spirit being poured out on us, that through Yahushua restoring us to the covenant, the Spirit has been poured out on us to give us a heart and ears to hear. Let, let those who have ears to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the called out ones. Okay? And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. So this is what we are. We to praise him in the land of our captivity and think upon his name. What's his name? His character. His authority. Okay? We're to think upon his fame. We're to think upon his name and return from our stiff neck and from the, uh, return from their stiff neck and their, their stick, stiff neck and their wicked deeds. For they shall remember the ways of their fathers which sinned before Yahuwah. Remember what our ancestors did and how they sinned against the Most High and broke the covenant. We got to remember that. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised. So there's still a promise to bring us into this place, into this promised land, into this space where he is king and ruler. With an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords of it. There's still this promise. And I will increase them. And they shall not be diminished. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their Elohim, their power. And they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people Israel out of the land which I have given them. So this is the time that is still promised to us. That the time that M Messiah is going to reign as king. He's going to reign as king on this earth. And his people will reign with him on this earth. In the land that, he, that the Most High is setting apart. Okay, so this time is coming up. Because right now there's an outcry of blood. Of, of of righteous blood that is that has been of the righteous that have been killed that is in the earth that's crying out from the land and the most high is going to avenge that blood the most high is going to avenge that blood but the but under the rulership of king of the king of Yahusha under Yahusha means the salvation of Yah the name of this of, of Messiah Yahusha or if you say Yeshua means Yah's salvation Okay, so through the salvation of Yah, through Yah's deliverance, that's how our people are going to be avenged. That's how we are going to be uh, delivered. That's how we are going to come, but it's only going to come under his kingdom. So if you have not hum humbled yourself and submitted to repent and return to your ears to hear the ways of the Most High, to hear his instructions, his, his ways, his tour. If you have not allowed the spirit of the Most High to be poured out on you through coming coming to the door of the house Yahushua through coming to because the covenant is restored in him so you cannot overcome by by riots and all these things you're going to overcome by the kingdom that has been established to overcome Yahushua is the king of that kingdom so if you have not submitted yourself to the king of the kingdom <laughs> to, the, to, to the one who will rule the earthly kingdom okay of the most high Yah, then you have to go you, you, you can't have the authority of the kingdom working in your favor if you have not submitted yourself to that kingdom so first of all, you have to repent. You have to acknowledge our forefathers' uh, sins. You have to repent, return to the covenant so that your ears to hear the word. Go to, uh, submit yourselves to the king of the kingdom so that your, the spirit can be poured out on you and that spirit can give you, can lead you and guide you in, in, into all truth and, and, and help you to navigate, to know what to do so that not by, your, not by the power of this world, not by uh, might, but by the spirit of the most high, you will overcome. You'll be an overcomer. In Revelation chapter 2, Yahushua says that to him who overcomes and guards my work unto the end, to him I shall give authority over the nations. Okay? 
read the book of Revelations chapters 1, 2, and 3 and hear what Yahushua says to his called out ones in this time and to what he will do for those who overcomes. Okay, it says uh, in chapter 3, to him who overcomes, I shall give to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the assemblies, to the called out ones. Okay, so, so this is this is what we have to return to. We have to return to allow, uh, to humble ourselves, repent, submit to the, the king of this kingdom, Yahushua, who, who by the power of the Most High Yah is going to rule and overcome the nations. It gives you power to overcome now through the outpouring of his spirit, outpouring of the Ruach. So this is Shavuot. This is the season that we're coming into where that spirit is being poured out. Okay, this is the season that we're in. So, we, so when we when we have not turned back to to, if we not have come to the, if we have not come to these understandings that we're not tuned into the calendar of the Most High and the feast days and we're not understanding what's happening in the world right now and we're not in place to receive what the Most High has given for us to receive in these seasons. In Romans chapter eight, somewhere around verse thirty one, it says, "But if Yah is for us, who can be against us?" And we like to quote that: "If Yah is for us, who can be against us?" But the opposite of that is, but if Yah is against us, who can be for us? So if, if Yah is not, if our Yah is not with us because we've not returned to Him, then we then we cannot stand against our enemies. So there's two things that has to happen individually. We have to return to the Most High so that He can pour out His Spirit to us as individuals, and we can have His presence with us as individuals as, and as in small communities, so that we're returning back to the way, so that our outcry will reach the ears of the Most High, so that so that it could be righteous ones crying out so that the Most High will hear, just like he heard in Egypt. He will hear our cries, and then he will come back and remember the covenant that he made with Abraham. He'll remember the covenant and he'll come that, that was renewed through Yahushua. He'll remember the covenant and the righteous blood that's been killed and, and is crying out. He'll remember that. He'll hear our cries, and he'll come back and heal our land and bring us up out of this land and heal our land and bring us back to the righteous kingdom being established. But we have to go through the process. Of turning back to Yah, returning back to the Most High Yah, inclining our ear to hear His Word, receive what He gave to us through the outpouring of the Ruach. This is the only way, this is the only answer, this is the only way that we will see victory. So we return first to this to the Spirit that He's given us, we, we walk in this way that He's given us, through his spirit that he's going to write his ways on our hearts. So we have to first individually return to the Most High. Receive this spirit. And walk in it. Collectively cry out. Okay. And he hears us cry out. And then we can get back to that second part. Where he collectively comes and gathers us. Right. And we have his presence with us. And then his presence with us is how we will overcome as a nation. His presence with us is how we will overcome collectively to come against the powers of this world. We cannot individually come against the powers of this world. Only with His presence being with us as a whole uh, will we overcome the powers of this world through His Spirit, through His presence. He will come against the nations of this world and we will see victory in Him. So for now, we have to seek individually and as small communities go back to his spirit go back to uh, uh, the protection that we have in his spirit to lead us and guide us through the darkness of this world so that we can cry out he'll hear our voice and then he will pull he will send his presence to protect us collectively and lead his people out and we will be again under the protection of him in his land hallelujah there is no way in our flesh to overcome and in Romans chapter 8 it talks about walking in the, in the spirit the spirit that gives life but if you walk in your flesh you're going to see death and that's what our people are going to see out in these streets out in these methods of man you're going to see death you're going to see death you're not going to see life you're going to see a continuation and a perpetuation of curses and death until you come into the spirit and allow the most high to illuminate life to you and to seal you in his life. Hallelujah. I pray that our people will hear and return. Hear what the Spirit says to the, to the, to the people. Who are willing to hear. Who have an ear to hear the Most High Yah. 
and return to the ways of the Most High Yah. Return to his Messiah, his King, his High Priest. Return to his ways so that we can return to our land. Return to the protection that we have when our power is with us and not against us. Hallelujah.